Let's see what the stew has for us today. Welcome to the GnomeCast, Gnome Stew's tabletop gaming advice podcast. Usually, we'd have a few gnomes talking with each other about gaming things to avoid becoming part of the stew. But for this special year-end episode, we've got a whole stew pot full of gnomes, each taking a brief look back at their gaming lives in 2019. Still, though, I guess they'd better be good. This is Rob, the editor of GnomeCast, and normally I don't get on this side of the mic. But in episode 81, the head gnomes granted me stew pot decision-making powers. So it's my pleasure to introduce this episode and serve as the year-end judge, jury, and head cook. Let's see what all these gnomes have gotten up to this past year. Hey everyone, this is Phil Vecchione, and I'm going to give you my 2019 gaming recap. So uh, 2019 was uh, an awesome year for gaming for me. I had two long campaigns go off through the year, so I played a fantastic game of Masks with my home group, uh, which was excellent. And that came right off the tails of us finishing our Tales from the Loop game. So our Masks game was fantastic and um, could not have been happier playing it. It is easily one of my favorite Powered by the Apocalypse games, uh, and I will definitely uh, play it and run it again. But my big surprise this year uh, was Forbidden Lands by Free League Games. I got a copy of it and I was going to run it for friends and... I was like, I was going to run it on a lark, and we turned out to absolutely love it. And I absolutely love this game. I think it's fantastic. It's probably one of my favorite fantasy games next to Dungeon Crawl Classics, and we're just having a great time. We've played, we've played it almost through the whole year, and and I'm I don't it shows no signs of stopping. So I'm super excited um, about that game continuing. Uh, into 2020. I also got to run a bunch of games at conventions for so many fabulous people. I got to run some Turning Point. I ran a lot of Hydro Hackers, chance to run some games that we have uh, in development, and just so much uh, great feedback from so many uh, wonderful people, and a chance to just kind of connect to all sorts of people who, you know, are out there at conventions, friends of ours, uh, people that we've never met before that hopefully are now friends of ours, Uh, And I really enjoyed it. As for 2020, uh, my home groups will just keep doing what they're doing. We're going to play a lot more of Forbidden Lands, and uh, we're going to spin up a few new games uh, in my other home group. Uh, And I've got my DCC group clicking away, playing uh, DCC modules, which is totally uh, rad and fun. And um, convention-wise, I am going to bring probably some of my normal stuff to conventions, so Turning Point and Hydro Hackers probably for sure. But I also want to bring stuff that uh, I didn't write uh, to conventions and run them for fun. But the big thing, the big thing that I'm going to do in 2020 is I'm going to co-GM with my co-host from Pandas, Senda, and uh, we are going to run games at a convention uh, together in the co-GMing style, which I've never done before. So I'm super psyched about it. And uh, that's going to be like the probably the biggest thing I'm going to do in 2020. So I hope that you had an awesome year of gaming in 2019. And I hope that you have an awesome uh, year of gaming in 2020. Play some cyberpunk. Hey there, it's Jen Adcock. My, uh, my 2019 in gaming was a really great, really exciting, really busy year. I um I think I went to more cons than ever. I think I went to six cons this year, um, all sizes, big, small, near, far. And I love conventions because it gives me an opportunity to game with people I might not get to see otherwise. I, <laughs> I ran so many games, got to play so many games, got to meet so many people, got to see old friends, got to make new friends. And what else do we game for except to spend time with our friends, new and old? Um, so that was that was really wonderful. I got to take part in my first Kickstarter this year, which was a huge success, went way beyond my expectations, and has been just such a wonderful learning experience, working with people who are experienced in the industry and who are willing to um, sort of mentor me and help me through some of the business side of the process, and even just seeing people be enthusiastic about ideas that I wasn't sure anyone else would be enthusiastic about besides me and my partners. Um, so that was really, really great. Um, that was a big milestone for me in 2019, I would say. I, I branched out in sort of some of the work that I'm doing in RPGs. I 
have gotten to work with some people who I just adore, people who I've admired and respected for so long, who I'm really, really grateful to get to call friends now, which is which is just wonderful. I um even in my home games this year, I got to take more of a player role and less of a GM role, which was just really refreshing this year for sure. So I'm looking forward to continuing this trend in 2020 of good games and good friends and good travel and everything else. Hey everyone, it's a D. I'm the newest gnome. What was 2019 like? Man, it, it's actually been a really surprisingly long year. It feels longer than ever ever before, but a lot of great games came out this year. I actually got money, so I was able to buy a bunch of games I cared about. I I opened up my Twitter and my blog, which was really nice, so now I have like content out there. Yay! I think one of the games I really, really cared the most about, or like ended up picking up, was something called Icy RPG or Index Card RPG. I was a big fan of it, and uh, it's easily my third, it's pushing to my second most favorite game of all time. Mostly because it's just super, super simple. And it's like they turn everything into combat. You got you got going, ac- uh, going across a chasm, combat. Fighting people, I guess, that's combat. Opening up a chest, combat. It's really neat. Go check it out. Games I ran. I got to try out a space adventure. And that's something I'd never had done before. It's, I, I involved... It was the first time I tried it with ICRPG because the, simple, uh, the system was so simple and it was so general and all-purpose that I was actually able to do this without feeling all too uncomfortable. It's So yeah, I got to try, I try out like a sci-fi setting. Um, warp drives, yada yada, a hex gate. Uh, that, that's what I called expendable warp gates because a bunch of uh, because a bunch of like small ships would have the graviton power to constantly generate it. I don't know. It's it was it was something. I got to try out sci-fi. That's what I'm trying to say. Sci-fi. My favorite game of the year. I guess I did talk about the ICRPG. Um Crystal Heart came out, the setting for Savage Worlds. It was um it's by that it's a it's a guy, Arana Viram, that did that webcomic up to four players. It's about like agents in uh in in a land that where all the people have like rocks for hearts instead, but then there's this one agency can take out rocks in your chest and put like magic crystals in there, and it's like super swapping powers. And I got to write an adventure for it. I got to write an adventure for it, which is really nice about this one girl. Oh no no! Well, the agents go off to an island where there's tsunamis threatening to like drown out the place and then with the help of this inventor girl they ride rocket powered surfboards in order to save the world or save the islands at least i, I want to make like an actiony thing that didn't have combat because i don't think i see that enough there's always a lot of combat everywhere and i'm starting to get a little tired of it uh i went to work cons this year i got to go to camcon that was really neat uh i should write an article about that yeah, it was really fun. I got to just do a lot more stuff this year. And I actually got really serious about tabletop things. And I hope 2020 is going to look really good for me. Or just in the, in, in, for the industry in general. Yeah. Not just me. I, I guess that's it. Cool. Hey, folks. Ange here. Taking a look back at 2019, the gaming was pretty damn good. I attended... Uh, several game conventions, Running Gag, Breakout, Origins, QCC, Akatacon, and Yukon. I also got to attend a couple of private, uh, as, a, as a co-worker calls them, bespoke artisanal cons, too. Basically a small gathering of friends. It's a bit more private than a full-on con, but you still get a whole lot of gaming in it. I love those. For the most part, at cons, I ended up running Tales from the Loop. Uh, There's a few other games slipped in there, here and there, but I did a lot of running of Tales from the Loop. And I kind of realized fairly early on that I was doing a thing without realizing I was doing a thing. I uh, set my very first Tales adventure in September of 1984, and then did the second one in October of 1984. Next thing I knew, I had created a scenario set in November 
and then another set in December. And so now I kind of have set myself on a path that I need to complete the entire year of eighth grade from 1984 to spring of 1985. I've got two other games on schedule, and we'll see what we come up with. I also, uh, at Origins, ran for a group called Matinee Adventures. Uh, it was a pretty fantastic run. We had nearly 100% fill rates with our events, and they're a really great group of folks to run with, so I really enjoyed doing that. When it comes to my regular game group, I got to run Waterdeep Dragon Heist for my crew. One of the, the, the folks I run with, uh, Tristan, who often runs D&D for us, had informed us that even though 5th edition had been out for several years, he had yet to actually play in a campaign. And that just couldn't stand. So ran Waterdeep Dragon Heist. Uh, for the most part, it went pretty well. A little bit chaotic and ran into several of the issues of when you run a published product and trying to balance it out with what your players actually do. There were several things in the scenario where they expect the players to do a certain thing, and I'm like, have they ever actually played with players? Because my players are not even going anywhere near that. Or things like a certain NPC they would expect the players to pretty much ignore, and my players like focused in like a laser pointer on this particular NPC. Um, so, okay, we'll deal with it. I got to play in a short Mutants and Masterminds campaign where I got to design uh, Protocol. She was my New York City cop in a battle suit, uh, and the battle suit was actually painted to match the rest of the fleet of the New York City cop cars. She was she was fun to play with, uh, even if she was the straight man for the rest of the chaos the group brought with it. My occasional online convention group that I get to play with and adore, we started a part-time gods campaign where I am playing Lucy Keen, the goddess of geekdom. I actually got to bring out my own geekdom, where I had a moment where I pulled a random issue of uh, X-Men out of the air, and it turned out to be an actual, like, like that was the issue that Jean Grey turned into Dark Phoenix, so a very, you know, popular desired issue, and I just pulled it out of the air, and I'm like, yes! Also, uh, my regular group brought back our 5th edition uh, city campaign, uh, the Indus campaign, where I got to play my Sorcerer Dove. And I don't want to get into too many gamer war stories, but I love that character. I love that campaign. And I am so glad we're back to it. In other stuff, I need to give a big shout out to John Arcadian our head gnome, because he brought me on as his co-head gnome, and I am super grateful for that trust and the work I get to do with all the other gnomes in John, because these are talented people doing amazing things. I, I, I'm i always, like, astounded by the stuff our folks are constantly bringing out. Our gnomes are awesome. And finally, I actually designed a game. It's mostly a mashup of bits and pieces of other superhero games I enjoy, but I made it, and ran a playtest of it, and it went really well, and hopefully that'll see the light of day sometime in the future. It's all in all, 2019 was a great year for gaming and me. I'm super happy with what I got to do, who I got to play with, and just hopefully more of that is happening in 2020. So I hope your 2019 was wonderful for both gaming and your mundane life, and here's to 2020 and the promise of the future. Hello, Wichigans. Uh, Gnome staff writer Pete Petrusha here. I'm here to share my look back at 2019. So some of my readers, as you know, have heard me talk about my local Games and Demand meetup. Uh, we call it the Tales of the 219. That's our local area code. <laughs> I thought, you know, Northwest Indiana story gamers would be more to the point, but uh, it wasn't that flashy or cool of a name. So um, this was year two for our monthly meetup. Uh, at different local gaming stores and hangouts. Uh, it proved to be a solid year for us. We we hit every month, and I think uh, one or two of them, we had two events, you know, catching the beginning and end. And uh, we've averaged a steady 8 to 10 players per event. Uh, we really didn't have anything less than that. 
but we really didn't have anything more than that either. Uh, maybe 11 or 12 one time. Um, but yeah, yeah that's, that's pretty good. It's always great when stuff like that is more consistent, as my newest article will suggest. <laughs> um, I met so many new people this year uh, as we revisited some stores and a couple new game stores open, which is neat. Uh, it's neat to meet people of all ages, too. You, you meet kids, you meet uh, adults that are, you know, adults to adults. <laughs> what games did I run? I ran Tales from the Loop. I ran Zombie World, uh, A Dream Chaser, of course, Cyberpunk Red, um, the new Call of Cthulhu starter set. Uh, I heard so many good things about how great of a product it was for new people, so I had to try it. Rest in Pieces is my new dark comedy horror game, uh, so I've been running that occasionally there. Uh, and I found an oldie but goodie, uh, Zombie Cinema, through IPR. Um, those components are crap these days, but the game was fun. Collaborative storytelling, sort of zombie apocalypse. Speaking of that, there's really the only other game I probably ran this year was Laser Kittens. Uh, and that was a hack. There's a whole bunch of hacks came out with the More Kittens uh, expansion on Kickstarter. Uh, I was running Trash Friends this year fun version where you play the animals that eat garbage, like the raccoon and the possum and the bear. Bigger is the convention coordinator for the Indie Game Developer Network. Um, I took us to seven conventions this year. Uh, that's probably opposed to three last year, maybe. Yeah, three last year with a uh, previous convention coordinator. Um, I think that if we're going to grow the hobby, we need to go to more places that are tangential, like anime conventions and pop culture conventions. We can't expect them to all get to Gen Con, especially as we all know that all the rooms are selling out and there's no tickets to be had and it's very expensive. I always tell new game designers, um, it, it's, it's, it's a crazy thing to see how people find games by the line of questioning. So if you ever get a chance to work a booth, you really should check it out, especially if you're a game designer, because you need to know how people find your game. The scariest and most rewarding thing I did this year was uh, taking over the Indie Groundbreaker Awards at Gen Con. Um, it's one of the major programs we do for the Indie Game Developer Network. You know, to honor and shine a spotlight on indie games, small publisher games. We moved to a new venue this year at the Punchbowl Social. So I had a lot of work to do with lining that up, finding the menu, recruiting judges, and then I hosted the show. So like, that's the scary part. And of course, I'm crazy because I did that as, as, you know, we organized like the fourth largest game room this year with over 200 events. And I had this giant 10 by 40 booth to get set up at the same day as the, as the show. So I'm running around, you know, crazy. Everyone's trying to get a hold of me to get their products in the booth. And anyway, it, it was a good thing. It was a good time and it was a lot of fun. A great way to wind down after all that stress. The early part of the year, I wrote for Faster Games on the new uh, Mystic Paths book in the Earth Online. Um, I wrote the Gauntlet in the Liberator essays, uh, thanks to Morgan Weeks, who was the lead and the editor uh, for most of it, at least in my part it felt. He made me sound smarter than I am and uh, made my words come out clearer. <laughs> It was really neat to work on something that, uh, you know, as a kid, I thought was so awesome. Basically, like, D&D meets Fallout. It was also cool because the gauntlet got to be, like, the cover image. And uh, one of my Dream Chaser artists I recommended uh, did the cover art, which was better than anything they did for Dream Chaser, which I'm fine with. It had been a little bit of time, so they've improved. Uh, speaking of Dream Chaser, a lot of milestones this year. Uh, the box set sold out, so I, well, sold out, I stashed a couple. Um, we got some spotlight treatment on Geek and Sundry this year, and some cover page stuff on Drive Through RPG. Um, my new dark comic game is most of what I did this year. Uh, it's about deadbeat roommates that live with the Grim Reaper. It's finally playing well. I never had a game development that was so hard to get the core mechanic to work well. Uh, I really wanted to innovate in Dreads, Jenga mechanics, if no one else did. Um, but, you know, some have come in the meantime, as I've been working on this for like two years or year and a half just trying to get the playtesting to work right. But um, finally, it's in a great place. You can look for that in 2020. It's going to be awesome. And I'm really excited to share with people because people just hear that you play deadbeat roommates that live with a Grim Reaper and they get super stoked. I'd be remiss if I didn't say that my son was born September uh, 7th of 2018. So that has definitely changed how my gaming life works, my work-life balance works, and how I when I get to read games. Speaking of games, let's see, uh, I'm really digging Spire at the moment. One of those games that people are like, I'll run it for you, I'll run it for you. Finally, I'm like, I'm going to read it, and I guess I will run the game. I also I, I could keep going back and forth and never going home. I hope to get that to the table in 2020. So that's me. That's a mouthful. And uh, take care. Hope you enjoy this look back in 2019. 
Hey everybody, this is Matt. I'm the gnome who writes all those articles with way too much freaking math in them and uh, does dice analysis and stuff like that. And uh, for GnomeCast82, we're doing the look back into 2019. My 2019 was kind of unimpressive RPG-wise. Uh, I moved in February. I had some changes to my job. And uh, to top it all off, uh, a couple months ago, my breathing machine broke, and I didn't realize it until uh, a couple weeks ago. So all kinds of things going on in my life that prevented me from really digging into RPGs. But I did enjoy playing in a Shadowrun game that's not really Shadowrun. It's Die 20 Modern. I enjoyed writing my articles on the, the Juntial setting that... Uh, I'm working on, and uh, I've gotten away from that for the past couple months. I really need to get back, but I'm still excited about it, which is new for me, that uh, I haven't been distracted by a shiny yet. One of the fun RPG-type projects I did this year, John Arcadian was working on a map project for Kobold Press, and he said, hey, can you help me figure out some math here? And uh, you know, I ran some formulas for him. And he says, no, what, what do you want for payment? And I said, oh, I, I didn't do all that much work. Just just tell the Kobold Press people to send me whatever they have laying around that, that they have a leftover comp copy of. And oh my God, they sent me a giant map. They sent me a huge creature codex book and they sent me a whole bunch of cardboard tokens. It was way too much for, for the little bit of work I did. But thank you, Kobold Press. And... Uh, one of the things that I really enjoyed in, in 2019 was, you know, I backed a bunch of Kickstarters for dice and role-playing games and stuff. And the part that particularly impresses me is the, the new variety of role-playing games that we're starting to see, both in terms of the type of game and the authors of them. Uh, and the different cultures and perspectives, uh, a lot of them are new and exciting, uh, especially for somebody like me who's pretty much stuck with, you know, knights and dragons and, and you know, European fantasy for his whole role-playing career. But also, you know, I feel like the only way we're going to get the best products we absolutely can is if we get the most designers into the mix and that means taking advantage of everybody and that means supporting a wide spectrum of creators and i think especially in the past year we've been doing a, a much greater job of that in the hobby and so good job everybody for uh for getting out there and creating and supporting and uh that was one of my favorite things about this year Thank you, and uh, on to the next note. Hello to everyone out there in Gnome Stew and Gnome Cast Land. This is JT Evans here, and I'm going to chat for a bit about my 2019 gaming. Like within a year, there's some ups and downs, but my gaming life has had more ups than downs during this past year. First, a brief flashback to when the fifth edition of the world's most popular role-playing game was released. I was still very upset with Wizards of the Coast for the debacle known as D&D 4th Edition. I'm not here to spark an edition war with anyone, but I was sorely burned by the 4th Edition for many reasons that I'm just not going to go into here. When they released 5th Edition, I refused to physically touch any other RPG products, and I certainly wasn't going to buy any of them. Then we jumped to the end of last year with the release of Waterdeep Dungeon of the Mad Mage. Crud. They had me. I'm a sucker for anything related to Undermountain. It's one of my favorite Dungeon Delve style settings out there. They had me and hooked me into 5th edition. I gotta say that I'm really happy they did. Playing 5th edition with my weekly group has been a blast, and I'm kicking myself for, well, being a petulant child about the whole thing. Oh well, live and learn, right? Anyway, we started off with Dragon Heist this year, right about mid-spring. And we've taken a detour away from that adventure to explore a character's backstory a bit, but we're finally ready to jump back into Dragon Heist. We're going to hyper-travel through whatever remains of the adventure, and then finally, finally, get to delve into Undermountain for a while. I can't wait. 
On the downside of things, I was super excited for the Expanse RPG to release. I had backed the Kickstarter and received my goods in a timely fashion. Unfortunately, the new weekly group I attempted to put together to run the Expanse, well, it just didn't pan out for a variety of reasons. Go check out my Gnome Stew article, uh, Nine Steps to Forming a New Gaming Group. That's my Lessons Learned article there. We even had a longtime friend of mine who's an astrophysicist in the group, and I really itched to see what he was going to do with the mostly realistic physics of the setting, like The Expanse. Oh well, life goes on. All in all, I suppose that if that's my major downer for the year, I'm in pretty good shape. I'm looking forward to what next year brings with 5th edition, though. I'm even more excited to see if the space opera RPG that's kind of been bouncing around in my head for a while will see the light of day. Those are longer-term plans, though, so I may talk about them again this time next year. I hope your 2019 gaming life has been fantastic. May your 2020 exploration of imaginary worlds and characters with your gaming groups be even better. I'm just going to close out and say, hey, it's 2020. I'm a punk. Where's my cyber arm? Where's my AV4? Come on, guys, get it together. Somebody invent that for me already. Hello, this is Chuck Lauer. Uh, I write ridiculous listicles full of poop jokes masquerading as GMing advice, as well as whatever pops into my fevered, perennially adolescent imagination. 2019 was a little bit lighter for me in gaming than I would like. The continuing struggles of adult life made finding and maintaining a regular group extremely difficult. However, what gaming I did manage this year was some of the neatest I've ever done. The thing I'm most proud of in game design space was getting a working system going for a high lethality Dread-style game using Kerplunk. If you don't know Kerplunk, probably because you're young enough not to have to worry about fiber in your diet yet, it's a toy-slash-game that suspends a container of marbles using plastic multicolored sticks. As you pull out sticks, some or all of the marbles fall through. In practice, it's basically dread in slow motion, which opens up a lot of possibilities for customizing how different characters or archetypes interact with pulls. My particular game was just a nostalgic romp through 80s cartoon characters and settings. I'll probably be throwing up an article as soon as I can manage to make it interesting without having to use the intellectual property of corporate entities that could squash me like a bug. I also spent a chunk of October in the UK, including getting to play a weekend full of games in an 800-year-old Scottish manor house with a tower. I ran Invisible Sun in a room with a fireplace that might well be older than the US, which is, yes, absolutely the best place to run Invisible Sun outside of Saturn itself. Uh, another favorite game of mine this year, also in Scotland, was Nobilis. Uh, Nobilis is a game from the early 2000s where the characters each play an aspect of reality, like lies or plants or bricks, which are at war with beings from beyond creation that want to return the world to its original, pristine state of non-being. Nobilis is probably my single favorite RPG, but I pretty much never get to run it. Nobilis is diceless, but relies heavily on miracle points, which are spent to achieve various effects or when opposed by another noble. It's also a game that leans heavily into the idea of flowers as metaphors. I decided to buy different colored roses to represent these miracle points, and as characters spent them, they threw them into a charcoal brazier I had in the center of the table. It was a neat atmospheric touch, if I do say so myself, and I'll probably be repeating it in other games as the opportunity presents itself. As far as the future is concerned, some friends and I are resurrecting the idea of the Year of Orphan Games, which I've mentioned in other podcasts. It's a year where we consciously make an effort to pull out our old favorites that had been gathering dust. This year, I'm particularly looking forward to revisiting Mage the Ascension and Mage the Awakening, as well as hopefully finally resurrecting my long-dormant Blue Rose game. Hey, friends and fellow gnomes, it's your friendly neighborhood Senda. I had some, like, big stuff happen this year for me personally and professionally, which was that the quick start for Turning Point, which is the game that Phil and I have been working on for, like, a while, came out. And She's a Super Geek, which is my podcast, one of my podcasts, got nominated for an Emmy, and that was really huge. But on a more personal gaming level, I was actually trying to think about how I could sum up my gaming for this last year because it was like a lot. It was all really, really good, but I couldn't even begin to describe to anyone who wasn't at the table the games that I was actually playing. And I've tried. <laughs> right? And uh, they're complicated. But I was just truly honored to play with my Game Boys all year. They're amazing. And no matter what we play, the drama and the feels just come shining right through and I love every single second of it. I think I probably had the best possible first 
LARP experience because I had an amazing group for the parlor LARP that I did for my birthday. And I also got to play so many games run by and frequently written by other women. And then I got to put most of those on my podcast, which was also amazing. And a lot of those were also super great feely games. Even better. I'm super into feely games. So my takeaway from this year in gaming, for me, is know why you game. Know what you're getting out of it. And know what style of gaming feeds the thing that you want from gaming. And then find and play with people who also want that. So for me, right now, this is all about feels. And boy, did I get the feels this year. And it was great. And I can't wait for 2020. Because it's not going to go away. (laughs) Happy New Year, everyone. Hello, Gnome Stew readers and listeners. Uh, This is John Arcadian, one of the head gnomes here. I had gnome alongside the wonderful Angela Murray. Um, But yeah, so uh, 2019 in gaming for me. 2019 in gaming was, was kind of the year that I went a lot more local rather than, you know, kind of broad. I actually kind of like pulled back from my online presence and doing a lot of stuff online and focused a lot more on local gaming. I started up a meetup here in Columbus, Ohio called Cat RPGs. It was a meetup where we're working to bring a lot more new people into gaming and provide safe spaces and spaces where people who may not, you know, traditionally be found at gaming can can see themselves in gaming. Uh, We do a lot of games where we teach people. We do a lot of games where, you know, it's open to everybody. And we work our marketing to, to very much say, hey, we are a place that you can be. So I've been doing that in and around Columbus, Ohio. From that, I have found an incredible group who gets all of my Final Fantasy jokes, and I have started up a a campaign with them, which has been phenomenal. Um, I've had a couple of, you know, local small groups do, you know, a little six-session thing, do a little three-session thing. I've been doing a lot of one-shot gaming, running various different games at meetups, running games at conventions, testing out different things. Um, But but yeah, I, I, I finally found a group that I think, you know... Since I am no longer moving around every year and a half, uh, that I think this group will actually be a, a longer lasting group, which is which is really great. Outside of that sort of, of gaming that I've been doing, I have been working on a few projects on and off, but in, in a very low key kind of way, which has actually been really n- a, a really nice change from the breakneck pace I usually push myself out to get one project or another out and done. You know, I've been working on playtesting, a, a kind of revamp of an old, you know, personal project that, that means something to me. Uh, I've been working on a new version of getting that out there. I've been working on a, a couple of uh, very fun and interesting D&D 5e sort of projects. I've been doing a lot of art direction through encoded designs. So yeah, I, I guess 2019 in gaming for me has been keep it local and uh, focus on the face-to-face interactions, which has kind of been wonderful. Hello, GnomeCast listeners. This is Jared Rasher, your review gnome, and I'm going to record a little bit for my recollections of 2019 in gaming. The main thing that I think I'm going to talk about for this particular GnomeCast is the conventions that I've been lucky enough to go to this year. I managed to get to a lot of different conventions and game days, and they were all really great. And uh, just the list of them that I managed to get to this year were uh, Lexicon Game Day in Lexington, Illinois, back in March. I went to the Queen City Conquest in Amherst, New York, in July. I went to Tabletop Central in Champaign, Illinois, in uh, September. I went to FlatCon in Bloomington in October. And also in October, I went to Gamehole Con, which is a huge thing up in Madison, which you may have heard of. The game days were a lot of fun. They were very focused. I haven't really gone to single day game days before. One of them, I was a player the entire time and played multiple sessions of Dungeon World. And the other one, I ran multiple sessions of uh, PBTA games and also facilitated a game of For the Queen. At Tabletop Central and FlatCon were my GM cons. And most of the time when I'm GMing games at conventions these these days, I'm playing Powered by the Apocalypse games because I like the feeling of generating the character for the session. And I also kind of like pushing myself to be more creative where I only have a very vague outline of what I'm going to do. 
and then it fills in as people make up their characters. And I really enjoy that for convention play these days. Also, a lot of my local conventions don't have Powered by the Apocalypse games available, so I am the one kind of being the ambassador for that and bringing that to these conventions, and I like being able to do that. QCC and Gamehole Con were both amazing because those were my conventions where I got to go and meet some of my online friends. QCC being in New York, I got to meet a lot of my East Coast friends, including some of our gnomes here, that I had not gotten to meet face-to-face before or that I hadn't gotten to game with before, and that was an amazing experience, uh, getting to actually be there in the presence of these people that I've talked to for so long and have really enjoyed communicating with and being able to spend some time with them face to face it was just amazing game hall i've been to before and uh, it was also an amazing experience but game hall is where i meet up with my uh, northern contingent and my western contingent of friends and including the gaming and bs people and a lot of the people from that community and that was also great and this year i managed to get in to play with some people that i had interacted with online that are from various places, uh, various freelancers, different uh, podcasts. So both of those were great experiences being able to put some faces to uh, to names and getting to spend some time with people and broaden my horizons. That was a lot of fun, and it was especially fun to reconnect with some old friends. I really wanted to specifically call out my time at QCC this year, not because Gamehole wasn't amazing, not because the other conventions weren't amazing, but There were two particular sessions that were probably the most intense role-playing I've done the entire time I have ever role-played, and they were uh, Jen's Ever the Towering Mountain playtest, where we were playing miners that were trying to unionize in the face of some horrendous historical events, and that was just amazing. We had this group of people, we had so much energy, we just fell into our roles, and I have never had a gaming experience like that before. Uh, We just Everything just clicked in that session, and I, it was the first time I ever cried by the end of a gaming session, and Jen just did an amazing job designing that game, but everyone at that table just knocked it out of the park. It was just incredible. And also Camden's One Child's Heart game, the camaraderie between all of us and talking through what we needed to do and role-playing the break room sessions between The sessions where we were trying to help the child were just this really amazing thing, and Camden's done something really special with that game as well. So I just definitely wanted to call out both of those as two of the most intense RPG experiences I have ever had. Really glad that I managed to get to all of those different conventions this year. I'm hoping that I get to a lot of different conventions next year, too, and I really hope that I get to reconnect with a lot of my online friends and to meet new people. So... I think that's pretty much where I'm going to wrap up. It's been a really great year in 2019. I hope all of you have an amazing 2020 as far as gaming goes. And I look forward to writing new things and connecting with all of you online. Thank you so much for your time. This show is funded by the Gnome Stew Patreon. You too can become a Patreon backer by following the Patreon link on the Gnome Stew website to the Gnome Stew Patreon. This ad brought to you by the 12 Days of Gnome Cast. The most gnomey of holiday songs awaits. Come on, everyone. You know the words. On all twelve days of gnome cast, my head gnome gave to me twelve gnomes are gnoming. Twelve gnomes are gnoming. Twelve gnomes are gnoming. Twelve gnomes are gnoming. Hang on. I think this thing is broken. If you're enjoying the gnome cast, you'll probably like many of the other misdirected mark shows. Here's one to check out. Bonus experience. Ray and Monica are two old friends exploring gameplay and design through the lens of diversity, while also sharing some of the dumbest humor gaming has to offer. You can find all the gnomes at gnomestew.com, at gnomestew on Twitter, and gnomestew on Facebook. You can also find the gnomes from this episode on Twitter. Phil at DNA Phil, Jen at Jen Cat Writes, that's cat with a K, D at Dice Q G M. Ange at Oriquez13, that's O-R-I-K-E-S-13, Pete at Vembranor, JT at JT Evans, Chuck at Innocuous Chuck, Senda at Idilla Mithland, that's I-D-E-L-L-A-M-I-T-H-L-Y-N-N-D, John at John Arcadian, and Jared at Knight Errant underscore J-R. And don't try to follow Matt on the internet. Also, don't worry, all of that is in the show notes. Finally, from me, Rob, 
Thanks to all of you for listening and reading, and I wish all of you a happy and game-filled 2020. So, do I think they avoided the stew this week? Well, let me say that as my first act of stew totalitarianism... Wait, what are you all doing here? No, wait, I wasn't going to put you in the stew. No, not the editing hole. No! Gnome Stew is hosted by Misdirected Mark Productions, the media arm of Dakota Design!